one nation to rule them all. Tab Nation. Hi everybody, I'm Tom. And are you like me and have a bunch of old tablets laying around your house and have nothing to do with them? Why not turn them into something useful? Using auto hotkeys, of course. So, I don't know if you've all seen what a stream deck is. Let me uh, actually pull that up. Just to show you. One of these little guys. These things are pretty cool, but hey. Maybe I don't have 80 bucks for one that only has six buttons on it. Or one with... That's $250 with a whole bunch. 32 of them. Yeah, but I just happen to have a old tablet laying around. Let's make kind of a knockoff version of one. So as of right now, I'm just calling this Auto S Deck. So first we're going to look at the code and then we're going to see what you need to download and then everything kind of in action. All right, that's the wrong thing. Notepad++, there we go. So the first thing I do is I just have F2 as a reload, just in case I need to reload it for some reason, something went wrong, whatever. <clears throat> Obviously, you can change that hotkey to whatever you want. So the first thing up is GUI and settings. Once again, F1, change it to whatever you want, but F1 is going to what? It's going to be displaying my GUI, and you'll see how that kind of works out a little bit. Not a lot here you really need to change. Uh, right here at line 11, we have system git, and this is looking at my third monitor, which is going to be my tablet. If it's going to be your fourth or your second, just adjust this to what you need it. But I want my tablet to be used as my third monitor because I have two monitors already, so that's going to be my third one. So that is one line of code you might need to change. I'm not going to explain every command in here. I have other videos doing it. I'm just kind of showing you the things that you need to know about this script. So here is our GUI. So I'm starting with white. Uh, I just think it looks better that way. You can change it to whatever color you want, obviously, but I just went with white. If you delete this line of co co uh, code, GUIs usually kind of come off as, uh, I want to call it like an eggshell color. It's kind of like an off-white. I don't know my colors very well, so I could be wrong. <laughs> Open all tabs in Chrome. Not sure why that's there. That's not the right line of code. Delete that. So here's our GUI. Um, we're just kind of doing a whole bunch of stuff. We got remote. Oh, I know why that was there. Let's leave that there. Um, so this is my GUI that I created. Obviously, you're going to create it however you want. I recommend using a program called Smart GUI Creator. It's written in auto hotkeys. It's very easy to draw your GUI out without having to code very much. And then it'll spit it out to like your clipboard and then you just paste it into your script. As of right now, you are going to have to customize your own GUI and create it. In the future, like kind of version 2 of this, I plan to make it so that you can adjust it and say, uh, maybe go to like settings and say GUI settings. I want five buttons. I want 10 buttons. Here's what I want button one to do, button two, that kind of thing. So I'm going to make it a little bit more user friendly eventually. But as of right now, you do need to create your own GUI. So I'm not going to go really over that. I start everything off as hidden. You'll see why. Um, I'm using a lot of uh, pictures here. Once again, you'll see why, but this is kind of like a remote control I made for my computer. Um, so I have my file path here to those pictures. Obviously, you're going to have to adjust this to whatever you're doing, and et cetera, et cetera. Basically, the GUI is going to be have to completely be con uh, controlled by you guys at the moment. Um, so yeah, just check out that GUI creator. It, it's smart GUI creator. It's it's so much faster than coding an actual GUI by yourself. It's it's so much better. Now, this is all my GUI. I just kind of broke it down into sections so I can remember, okay, button one opens all tabs in Chrome. Button two, or section two, really, is my remote for my computer. And then I have another button that's called gaming, which, as of right now, doesn't do anything. I am then going to do GUI show. For the coordinates, we're going to do monitor three left, monitor three top, and so on. And that's basically what that's doing. <clears throat> is up here when we did that system git. It's getting the coordinates of 
every corner of that tablet that we have. That way when we open the GUI, it's basically full screen on there. So just kind of don't play around with that. The only thing you're going to have to adjust is if you're using monitor 2, you just need to change this 3 to a 2. So just keep that in mind. Once again, hopefully in the future, not sure when, I will fix that. This is going to be the most complex part of the script, really, is creating the GUI. After that, when I do something like click this, go, good morning, that's going to jump down to this handler here. And as you see, I just have it run a bunch of different uh, sites for me. Now, we can create sub buttons. I click a button, other buttons show up. So this is the remote handler. So if I click on the remote, it's going to display all those icons. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to show them since they were originally hidden, as you see up here. Well, now I want to actually show them. And then I want to hide everything else that I might have had open. So this is another thing you're going to just play around with um, with your buttons. So if you, know, you have a, a picture of youtube and pandora and you click on youtube you know the button up here as you see well picture i would use a picture that just looks cleaner it's going to then jump down and then you just got to make sure that you're showing it now because you you clicked it now i want to show my music choices and then hide anything else maybe you had another menu that you had open that was showing tv shows you like to watch and you click it and it takes you to that netflix thing well, we want to hide those because we now want to show our uh, remote stuff. So there's a lot of playing around with here. I can't really tell you what the answer is going to be just because it just depends on the GUI you made and you know how many submenus you have, how many buttons you have, that kind of stuff. And you'll see a little bit better what I, I mean by that when I actually show you this in action. And that's really all that's going on around here is just, you know, <clears throat> when I click this button, what does it do? So if I push the last button, it's going to say, if window exists YouTube, go to previous. So it's going to go to the previous video. Uh, pause. Send media play pause if YouTube's active. I, I just have this only working for YouTube. Obviously, you can just get rid of this whole if window exists thing and just have it like this if you want. Now, this would, if I push pause play, it's going to work in every program now, not just YouTube. So you can play around with that or just have it simple. And that's pretty much everything that's going on. Like I said, I'm showing you my code. It's really going to be up to you to customize it how you want. <clears throat> now let's talk about installing. The first thing we want to do is jump over to spacedesk.net. There are other programs out there. I just found this one to be simple. It's free to use, and I will put this in the description below. But you're just going to go ahead, push the download button here, pick your version that you want to download, Windows 10, 64-bit, you know, 32-bit, whatever, and just run that install. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'm not going to do it because I already have it. And that's all we're going to be doing right there. The next thing we're going to need is our tablet. So let me go ahead and make myself a little bigger here. Let me open a white screen so you can see me better. Zoop. Whoa, you can see outside my green screen a bit there. There we go. Now I'm a giant. All right, let's adjust here a little better so we're comfortable. Here's my tablet. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. I'm not going to show you because I don't need you to see my pin number. One, two, three, four. I mean, and we're going to go ahead and go to the Play Store. So I'm using an Android. Um, something to remember is not all Android tablets have the Play Store, uh, especially if you're using like a kid's tablet, they might not have them, or a Nook, I actually, I think some of them don't have the Play Store at all, or they have a very limited one. So definitely check that out before you really dive into this. Make sure you can actually get this. So we are going to the Play Store, if I can get it to go. There we go. I think the internet's being a little slow. <clears throat> and we're going to do the same thing. We are going to grab Space Desk. Uh, camera doesn't want to really focus on that, but that's fine. 
messed up my green screen too. So yeah, just go ahead, get that, push install. I already have it, so I'm going to go ahead and push open. Now on the desktop version, you can choose for it to auto run when your computer starts, or you can just manually launch it. It's really up to you to each his own. So once we get it going, um, this is really hard to see on here. <laughs> but as you see right there, there is an option. I'm sorry, it's blurry. It says connection and it has like an IP address. We're gonna go ahead and click on that. There is my computer basically saying, oh, you just connect it. So look, as you can see, you can see my desktop there, Tab Nation, that's my wallpaper. So this is now officially my third monitor. See how easy that was? A quick install of an app and a desktop application. I mean, you're up and running with this third monitor, your tablet as a or second or third monitor within minutes. It's so easy, it's free. Uh, I'm using this wirelessly right now for the video. You can plug this into USB uh, just because doing it that way will not only charge it, but it's a faster data connection versus using it over the Wi-Fi. The reason I use Wi-Fi, even though it has maybe like a two second lag, is because I like to go sit on my couch over there and use this to, once I open my GUI, you'll see a little better. So let me do that, but use it as a remote. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to run that script. <clears throat> and as you saw right here, I have F1 as my hotkey. So when I press that, it's going to open that. A little bit of a jump there because uh, my OBS kind of screwed up there for a second. But I'm going to go ahead and start that program, Auto S Deck. And F1 was my hotkey, as you saw uh, right here. Obviously, whatever it is for you, you can just change it up. But let's go ahead and press F1. This is my Android tablet. It's being used as my third monitor. So I'm going to push F1. And there we go. There is my GUI that I created. Let me get a wrap around here. So hopefully this kind of shows up. But as you can see, there's those three little buttons I had. Um, so if I push the second one, which is the remote, uh, if I can aim, as you see, there is my remote that I was talking about. So I have volume up, volume down, mute, <clears throat> uh, next, play, pause, previous. And anytime I push these, it's going to change, you know, whatever I press. I like having it wireless because of this specifically. I can go sit on my couch and control any like movie or anything I'm watching like that. So yeah, um, obviously customize the GUI to however you want. Mine's pretty basic right now because I'm still working on it. But if you have any questions, definitely hit me up in the comments below or any ideas on how to improve this. But as you saw, the GUI instantly snapped and adjusted to be full screen based on my third monitor or second if it's up to you. All right, everybody, hope you uh, found this pretty useful. It's a nice little way to bring new life to some old Android tablets that you have. And I'll see you guys on the next one.